previously Two. on Road to Vengeance. One. I think I saved my life. I saved my life by finding MMA. I'm trying to go back and rewrite my story. But I've already broke Pitbull. I broke him already. You know, that's a toy that's already been used up. My knee shifted inward. I heard a slight pop, just felt real loose. Will Brooks is probably the best athlete to ever step foot in this place. He's built like an NFL running back. Barson Held is trying to come in there into my castle and take my crown, and I will not allow it. I will break his face, and I will walk out of there with my crown. November 6th at the Scott Strait Center in St. Louis, Missouri is a night you're not going to want to miss. We have an amazing night of fights stacked top to bottom. He got it! There is the tap! There is the stoppage and the world title for Will Brooks! A lightning strike title defense for Michael Chandler! You're going to see a lot of guys going for the kill, taking risks. Any of these guys can end it in any manner of ways. I can't lose. And I won't lose to this man. I mean, one of these days I might go to jail ripping donuts up out here in the desert, but that's a price I'm willing to pay for a little bit of fun. <laughs>
I'm training with him, I feel his uh, his aggression. I feel his body, his energy, his body change, his strength has changed, his focus is different. He's greedy, he wants everything, he's tenacious. I think he's gonna take um, Pitbull eye. They're, they're very one-dimensional as far as both of the Pitbull brothers. They're a lot more talk than they are action, and Strauss isn't about all that, you know? He doesn't say a lot of words, but when you go out there, he's game, he's gonna bring it. And Pitbull knows that he barely made it out of that last fight. Will, as a partner, I mean, just brings it, brings it to the table. You know, you hear the phrase, the iron sharpens iron, and that's what that's what we have. You know, we got another champion in the, in the, in the house. He's pushing me, and hopefully I'm, I'm pushing him. St. Louis, November 6th, is gonna be a hell of a show. It's gonna be a great night. We're gonna walk out, walk out of there with two new Bellator belts. We're gonna party, have a good time, and we'll take a picture and cheese for the Pitbull brothers and yeah. ask them where their belts are. We're out here uh, in the desert, close to Superstition Mountain. The Toyota Tacoma's got some uh, horses that need to be let out every now and then. I mean, one of these days I might go to jail ripping donuts up out here in the desert, but that's a price I'm willing to pay for a little bit of fun. You know, you blow off a little bit of steam. The cool thing about Arizona is I don't really think there's many rules out here. I think if it's like dirt and it's dusty and it's a desert, I think pretty much it's just God's country and you can do whatever you want. You know, Phoenix for me is a training camp and it's a little bit of solitude, you know, working out, enjoying the journey and embracing the grind. So every single time I make that drive, it's, it's just about going back to work. how it happened. Chandler turning his back, covering up, and that is it! Losing a fight, and, and not just losing a fight, but losing your third fight in a row, you know, you go back to the locker room with your tail tucked between your legs, your wife is, is looking at you, and, and your, your family's kind of looking at you, and your, your coaches are kind of looking at you, and, and they love you so much, and they, they care about you so much, but they don't know what to do. I'll never forget. Bree and I got back to San Diego, and we're just sitting there, and I don't really know what to say, and she doesn't really know what to say, and she just starts crying, and, and, and she doesn't understand how, you know, her favorite man in the world can be in this situation, and we just sat there and we cried together. I think Mike was at a point in his career where he was in a slump a little bit, and I think when you get in that slump and you lose three fights, you start uh, questioning things, you know, and if he was gonna move on with the sport, he was gonna maybe need to uh, to get a fresh look at some things. Depending on how he reacts and where he squares his body up, on the hand, I might be able to re redrop or re-penetrate that double. I think that's great. I needed to get back to the basics, and, and here in Arizona, they're brilliant with the basics. Aaron Simpson at the helm runs a predominantly wrestler mindset in camp here. I'm gonna step to the right, do a little pound step, boom, and rip. And I want his face to smack, to bounce off the mat. You know, Mike gives me everything I can handle every single day, and you know when we spar, uh, you know he puts me in my place every now and then. So you know he's feeling really good. Not as much as I would like to, <laughs> but yeah, he's feeling good, and uh, you know I'm just trying to pick up things from him. You know, to be great, you have to sacrifice. And I feel like Michael is, uh, is living that right now. He's gotten out of his comfort zone. And, and we all know that, you know, we know that it's, it, it's not a part-time gig. It's everything revolves around here's fighting and then here's our life. And that, that's all we're doing is making those, those sacrifices. I want to be able to say that I, I left no stone unturned. And that's, that's really the way that I'm living my life, moving out here to Arizona away from my wife. Um, living in a little bitty apartment. Yeah, this is Eli right here. This is my buddy. This is who I cuddle with while Bree's home, home in San Diego. This is who keeps me company. He just hangs out, eats, sleeps, doesn't do a whole lot. I gave him the lion cut so he doesn't shed all over the place, right, buddy? 
when I'm here, it's all about fighting, it's all about training. The only thing I do outside of training is come back here, recover, eat food, read some books. I think I've gone through two books already since I've been here. And it's all about, you know, the constant pursuit of getting better. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to, to live comfortably. I'm here to, for uh, one, one reason only, and that's to train, that's to get better, and that's uh, to keep propelling myself towards that title shot again. So, um, putting my calling over comfort. Chandler showing the speed advantage. Oh, big right hand by Chandler. Chandler looking to finish early in round one. And he's got the rear naked. That is tight. That is deep under the chin. And there's the tap. And just like that, Michael Chandler is back. Floyd believed that he's back to his old self with a few tricks here and there that, that we've added to it. He's refocused and he's got that tunnel vision now of, of getting back to that, uh, winning that world title and, and being the man at this weight class. He's gonna smash Dave Rickles. I don't, I don't think Rickles is, uh, it, it stands a chance. Michael Chandler can't overlook David Rickles. This is a much better caveman Rickles fighting, I think, for his competitive life. I didn't get close enough last fight to, to smell him. This fight, you know, if I don't knock him out quick, I plan on getting my hands on him, pick him up, and slamming him, and I'm probably gonna be real close to all of his his stench if he doesn't if he doesn't shower like I hear he doesn't. So yeah, we'll find out. So I'll let you guys know after November 6th, after I get my hand raised. If you were to pick a guy out in the room and say, I don't want to fight that guy, it's always going to be Bobby Lashley. It doesn't matter what kind of murderer's row is in there. You don't want to fight a guy like Bobby Lashley. When I was in St. Louis, there was just another one of those guys that was sitting there yapping his gums, and I'm going to show him that I can do anything I want to do to him. Lashley Thompson, what can I say? Uh, I think it's going to be a great rematch. For Bobby Lashley, he's on that road to the title. That's what he's looking for. He wants the belt. And to get there, he's got to finish Thompson in this fight. Both guys physically gigantic, aggressive, and they're gonna go for the finish in a fight that went the distance last time. It could be the fight of the night. I'm just going out there with another fight, another opportunity to get another title. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm working towards that heavyweight title in Bellator, and that's all that really matters to me. Prediction, I think first round TKO. interesting that one of the last things Daniel Strauss did before breaking camp was to sit down and watch his whole fight with Patricio Pitbull. Watching a fight that you gave away for a world title is like ripping off a band-aid for 20 minutes. I think it was a good idea because you don't want to forget how bad that felt. Title on the line. The trademark start from John McCarthy, and here we go with round number one. Here we go. Good counter left by Strauss. There I go, I tagged him a few times. I'm just trying to make sure that I keep him, you know, somewhat in front of me. Going into the second fight, I think most people would have expected a similar version to the first. And the truth of the matter is that it was much, much more competitive. <laughs> Clean shot, clean hook. First thing he does is cry foul. Touch of gloves. I think my biggest threat at this time, man, is uh, my range. I think Pitbull's a little taken aback by the speed and aggression of Daniel Strauss. Now, this is the third time he's cried a foul, and, you know, I get warned with the headbutt. And here's where the momentum changed in the fight, right there. Strauss all over Pitbull. Hands much faster, he's much more committed to his boxing. He is not intimidated at all. I just start putting the pressure on him. Boom, catch him. That's what happens in a fight. You get caught, you keep fighting. It's part of fighting. Round number two. Jimmy, your scorecard. 10-9, Daniel Strauss. Aggressive, landing good shots. I'm trying to pump my jab, get my kick in. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. 
I did catch him low there. Murphy recognized that as low. He said, are you good? Both fighters agreed to keep going. Low kick again for Pitbull. Another now shot. Now call by McCarthy. That's two in a row. With him dancing around, moving around, and me throwing my strikes, you know, you're going to connect. I don't know what he's complaining about. Another shot to the car. Now is when I'm upset. I love Big John, man, but uh, me and you is about to fight right here. No, he's telling me to watch my kicks, watch where they're going. Not hurt. He's not hurt. He's a little butt hurt, but he ain't hurt. So McCarthy takes the point from Strauss. This is big. A one point this low is low. big. A one point low low. Strauss turns around, gets ready to fight Pitbull, and begins to clap. You're running. Like, let's go. Let's get it. As if this fight needed a more personal element, they're now pissed. So we at it again. Now I know I just got it. I got to work. Nice throw by Daniel Strauss. Boom. Get his back again. Round number three for Bellator's featherweight world title. Once again, Daniel Strauss being the aggressor. Daniel Strauss showing good speed. Bye. Straight down the middle. That's the one I believe that cut him. He don't want to see them straights. In the third round, that was the round, I think, that we thought the title's going to change hands tonight. He looks so good. He's starting to open up on that right eye. It's 10 seconds left in the round, and I know I want to finish hard, try to go for that takedown and, and secure this uh, round, which I felt I did. He broke in this fight. Look at that man's face. You can't tell me that's a man that wants to get in and go for the next round. Round number four and into the championship rounds we go. At this point, I know I'm up. I know I'm winning the fight, and I know he doesn't want to be here with me. Pitbull right now not having a lot of answers for the offense of Daniel Strauss. As you see, his eyes are opening up a little bit more. And then that's where I set him on his ass. Pitbull's work, Strauss pounces. You know, you see somebody hurt, you just want to get them down, pound them out, whatever. Where my, my thought should have been to disengage, reset, start firing again. He had this split-second decision to go in there and, uh, and put the finishing touches on that and try to put the fight away. But instead, he reverted back to his wrestling. He tried for a takedown, which I think gave Pitbull the opportunity to recover. Big right hand from Pitbull to answer back. That was because he hit him in the cup. There, he hit me. You know you hit me. From here, I'm just trying to recover, I'm trying to catch my win. I, I don't want to allow him to, to believe that uh, I'm more hurt than I really am. You know, at this point, I want to get back on my, on my horse. You know, I want to move forward, keep working them jabs. Boom, there I go, counter again. Pitbull now looking for the level change. Here's where my mental laps started going. Right there, right before that takedown. Looking for the double leg. And he takes down Strauss. Guys like Pitbull, when they get hurt, they don't really lose composure. They kind of just stand there and figure it out. Strauss trying to make himself small. And he takes my back right here. It's hard, man. I don't like seeing this. I don't like seeing Lou and I, and I don't like seeing Lou the Hill. Pitbull now looking to finish with the rear naked choke. He's got it. Percy taking a really close look. 14 seconds, 13 remaining in the round. He got it! And that shit, man. That, that won't happen again. Won't happen. Won't happen. I can't lose. And I won't lose to this man. Sorry, that's the best I got, man, because I can't can keep watching this shit. For real. Like, just really can't. Get my shit. Man, God damn. Man, I can't stand that dude either.